Welcome to the Interesting Podcast, episode number 90. Nine zero, guys. We are so close to the big one zero zero, which I cannot wrap my head around. I'll be honest with you, that's insane. You know what else is insane? My guest today is Matt Sterling, who is just, you know what, pun intended, he is magical. You know how there are some people who like, they're just true performers, you know, like when they're on stage, whatever they're doing, you just can't take your eyes off of them. Matt is one of those. He is an actor, he is a stuntman, and as if those two things weren't cool enough on their own, he's also a magician. What? How is one person that cool? I don't know, but somehow Matt figured it out. Uh, we had a great talk. We talked about how he got into stunts, which, okay, let's be honest. I, for some reason, ahead of time, I was like, you know, to qualify to be a stuntman, there's probably a course you have to take, maybe a school to go to, and then when you're done, boom, you're a stuntman. No! The qualifications alone for being a stuntman in the UK are insane. Insane. I was not prepared. So, like, the level that you have to be at multiple different things is just, it blows my mind. Blows my mind. And Matt did it. Matt's done a lot of things, and they're all cool, and it was it was so great to talk to him. We talked about all the different movies that he's been in. He was in Star Wars. He was in Harry Potter. He was in Blade, Fast and the Furious. We talked about how he got kicked in the chest by Blade, how he saved Harry Potter, how many times he got thrown into the ceiling by the rock. Uh, just great. I love talking to stuntmen because they have the craziest stories, you know, and it's 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 just great. They're super fun. They're super fun. Uh, we talked about his Britain's Got Talent auditions, um, which was great. I I cannot recommend enough. You guys go on YouTube, check out Matt Sterling on Britain's Got Talent. His magic acts were so cool. Both of them were just great. Check them out. You're going to love them. Matt's the best. So without further ado, here is The Interesting Podcast, episode number 90 with Matt Sterling. Theme song time. Yeah, it's wonderful when it's working, but it's not when it's, uh, yeah, when it's not, it's terrible. Absolutely. It's like cars. Cars are the same yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. Awesome to have till they start breaking, and then you're like, what is what is the point of this? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing today? Very good, mate. Very good. Yes, I had, uh, I've had a whole week of it. We've been doing some fights on Fast and Furious, and now uh, yesterday was, I was gigging yesterday, so I had a, I had a close-up gig, Magic, uh, and then today was, I've just been training, taking the dog for a walk. Yeah, taking the dog for a walk and doing the stuff that you don't get to do in the week, cleaning the house and that sort of stuff. Laughing the Hollywood stuntman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the do part they don't tell you about. Do, exactly. Do me washing and that's it. There you go. Not bad. Not bad at all. Yeah, you, right, mate. you get right. one day to have a normal life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one and a half if you if you're lucky. There you go. There you go. You gotta you gotta sleep sometime or so I'm told. Absolutely. You know, <laughs> yeah. Maybe I guess. I don't know. Yeah. I still haven't figured it out, to be honest. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. The way I see it, it's like, at least you're doing cool stuff. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you're not sleeping, but you're doing awesome things because you're not sleeping. And like, I mean, yeah. if you had the choice, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah absolutely. No, it's it's been long days, but I've had a lot of days that they've given us sort of three quarter days and half days, which have been fantastic because they've been very behind with uh, scripts and all that sort of stuff. So they had changes. So I've had a lot of time off, which has been nice. But yeah, this week has been a little bit manic because obviously we've had this this uh, hero fight that we've been doing. Um, so it's quite a long, it's quite a long routine. Um, and they've been doing a lot, of, a lot of changes, a lot of script changes. So um, we've been sort of waiting there to, for the bits and bobs and to see where they want to go with it and, and adapt to what they ever want, really. Sure, sure. Are you good at relaxing? Because I found that I'm not. Um, I, I, I kind of am. Uh -huh. that's, a good, that's a good question. I kind of am, but I, I, I do get very fidgety. If, I've, if I'm on holiday, um, I kind of want to do things on holiday. I'm not, a, I'm not a lounge on the beach for seven days of my life Same. kind of person. Same. Um, 
So I will tend to go diving or, you know, go and do something, go and do an activity that I, I find, I find if I don't go to the gym for four or five days, I get very, very agitated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it just, it's become a, you know, it becomes a part of your life, really the gym. So, um, and training and keeping fit. So, um, and it's been a part of my life for so many years now that, that, it's um it's just kind of inbred in me really i think um sure. and i do yeah I, I don't i don't really tend to sit down for a long period of time um a lot of my mates are that i think they've got something wrong with you because you don't sit down <laughs> for a long period of time i think the only time i sit down for a long period of time is if i'm watching a film so yep. but I, and i can do that i can literally just go bang right but i'm not I literally you had this conversation at work yeah, on uh, Thursday, a couple of people were saying, oh, you've got to see Killing Eve and you've got to see this on Netflix and that. And I said to people, how do you find time to do it? Because I haven't, yeah. I, haven't really, I haven't really got the time to do it. I kind of, yeah, I don't, I don't really have the time to watch a TV series. I've literally just watched the last episode of Stranger Things. Oh, so good. Um, and I loved it. Yeah, absolutely loved it. But I like that because it's only sort of, six or seven episodes and it's only sort of 45 minutes long an hour long and i can cope with that right um, if i'm at home i find other things that i want to do yeah i'm the same way i gotta be doing stuff all the time it's like what Absolutely. sleeping is like that's the downtime like i have to sleep yeah. so, that, so that i can keep doing cool stuff same yeah exactly same exactly man and that's another thing that i've learned from a lot of people that like go to the gym it's a it's a routine thing you know, like you're saying, it is a lifestyle. Yeah. Like you gotta, you get into it, and then you get into a swing. So when you get out of it, you're like, um, I don't know yeah. what to do with my hands. It does, it does feel. But yeah, it's like a smoker. You take, you take cigarettes away. They're like, oh, okay, what do I do? Right. What do I do next? And it, 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 it's become, it does become a way of life, really, for you. Because I, you know, I do, uh, I changed gyms a couple of years ago because I had a gym that's much closer to me now, and it gives me a lot more time in the day because nice. my other gym, my other gym was sort of half an hour away, so I'd drive there, do my training, so it's about an hour and a half, two hours, and I come back, well, that's three or four hours of your day gone already, so this one is only literally five minutes up the road, so I go in there, I do an hour and a half, and I'm out, I'm done, bang, I'm, and I'm home. Smart. So, yeah, that's a bit best. We've got a gym, at, we've got a gym at the, on set at the moment, so oh, sweet. We've, got, we've got a nice gym that we can use, so I'm kind of using that in the morning, uh, and then starting work, and then um, I'm getting into the routine of doing that, really. There you go, one hand washes yeah. the other. Exactly. That's exactly. the dream, isn't it? <laughs> I was, uh, so I got to ask, because you go to the gym, what do you eat? Because I feel like every time I've asked people to go to the gym, it's like, well, hold on. And then they put on their lab coats, and it goes, well, there are different no, types of food groups. No, do you know what, Brian? <laughs> I, I really don't. I, I, I eat clean. Mm -hmm. I tend to eat I tend to eat pretty clean. Um, I, I don't really... Uh, <sighs> If I want a job, and I'm, I'm, I'm in, like, at the moment, we, we're doing what I'm doing. I'm trying to eat a little bit clean. I have uh, the weekends, or, you know, I, I, I won't go out. We get my way a little. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really drink. I'm not a massive drinker. I'm not a huge I'm pretty boring in that sense. So I'm not a massive drinker. I don't really drink masses of wine or alcohol or anything like that. So mm -hmm. um, I have got a pretty... A, a bit of a sweet tooth which is a bit of a killer especially when you're on a job like this and you're trying to watch what you you sure. look like and uh, you've got craft you got craft services you've got a massive probably pick and mix and stuff like that you know there and they've got oh, chocolate yes. out and you're thinking oh my god i could eat everything that's here um <laughs> but i i know I, I tend not to eat i i mean i probably have um every evening i'll probably have either chicken or steak at the moment, because it's quite, you know, it's quite warm, I'll probably have, um, you know, a steak and salad or chicken and salad. Um, and in the daytime, whatever craft is, whatever sort of um, we're getting served in the mornings, I'm probably having fruit with yogurt, and that's about it, mate, really. That's, I'm not, I'm not, um, and I'm having three meals a day, roughly. That's not um, bad. So I'm, yeah, I don't, I don't go out my way to measure out this and measure out that, and I, I can't live my life like that. A, yeah. a mate of mine was... <laughs> Yeah, a mate yeah. of mine said you should compete, and I said no. I said I, no way could I compete. I said I, I couldn't be, you know, weight training or anything like that. I couldn't compete because I wouldn't have the strength to stay on the diet that these guys do for six months. I just wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah, and eating like eight times a day. Yeah, always. Yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. No. Your, yours sounds way more manageable. I I do that kind of gym life yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of you know be a person too <laughs> yeah absolutely enjoy your life a little bit as opposed to just being that 
oh right, you know, I've got I've got to do this, I've got to do that now. I'm going to eat here, I'm going to eat there. And uh, a friend of mine who's just literally competed, and they've they've done very very well in a um, in a, in a weight in a in a sort of a bodybuilding competition. Sweet. He said, uh, I said to him, would you do it again? He said, no. He said because <laughs> I missed out. He said I missed out on so many things. Uh, yeah. So many events, you know, people's weddings, birthday parties, and God knows what he said. Because I couldn't go, I just couldn't go. Because I, he said, I just, I'd be training and eating. That's all I'd be doing. He said that was my life. Man, it is a lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. That's the thing. So I've been excited to talk to you for a long time because ah, you, speaking, thank you very much. Speaking of uh, doing cool things, dude, you're an actor, you're a stuntman, and a magician. Which is what? How's one yeah. person that cool? Is it difficult? Does it hurt? <laughs> is it uncomfortable? Tell me the truth, Matt. Uh, <laughs> it's a bit of a strange. It's a bit of a strange mix, isn't it? Really. I mean, the because everybody always says to me, "Oh, you know, how did you become a stuntman?" So how it all kind of started when I I didn't intentionally come out of college and say, "Right, I'm going to be a stuntman." Sure. Um, I, I, it just didn't happen like that. I was always very physical. I was always throwing myself around and. Uh, and when I was when I left school, I I, um, I went to a, 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 a college called Italia Conti, which is um, a very famous um, acting school and uh, performing arts school. Oh, so you wanted so, to be an actor first? Yeah, so I went there. I went there for for, for a year. I did a um, a year's um, their first ever drama course. So I did a year's um, drama course there, and then I came out of drama, drama school and I thought, Do you know what? I don't think I'm ready for the big wild world yet. Um, I, I don't. I don't feel like I'm ready. So uh, I was very lucky enough to get a scholarship, and I stayed on for a further two years. Nice. So I stayed on for nearly through nearly another sort of two and a half years, and I did dance. I did. I did everything. I did singing. I did the full sort of um, performing arts aspect of it. Um, and then while I was at college, I. All the way through, I mean, from about the age of about eight or nine, I, I did magic. I I was just fascinated oh, by magic. So uh, it was just it was just something that I kept going. And, 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 and then I kind of fell into going semi-professional, i.e. getting paid for it when I was about 15, 16. I started performing at people's weddings and having Killing a laugh. And, and then people started paying me and I thought, okay, this is quite good. So yeah. it got me... <laughs> When I was at college, you know, on a weekend, if I was performing at a party or stuff like that, it was nice. It was a nice little thing to do. Um, and then I came out of college and did a various different theatres and di different tours and all that sort of stuff. And, and was on tour. I did pantos and, and endless shows. Nice. And then I was at the Opera House in Covent Garden and I met a guy who is a great mate of mine now. Um, we've stayed friends ever since. Um, his name was Richard Bradshaw and Richard uh, had just qualified as a stuntman. Oh, sweet. So Richard said to me, you need to train to be a stuntman. He said, you'd be perfect. And I went, really? He went, yeah. And I was intrigued by it because I thought it was a family thing. I thought, you know, your dad was a stuntman, so you become a stuntman. I didn't right. know there was a way in. Um, and Richard, um, uh, lo and behold, introduced me because he just started seeing a lady and her name was Sonia Jackman. And it was Hugh Jackman's sister. Oh, I'm seeing a thread here. So Richard married Sonia Jackman. That's how I got to know Hugh Jackman before, that makes Hugh, sense. Became, before Hugh became famous. Sure. Um, so Richard kind of got me into the stunts and I took four years out at the same time as doing the shows I, I did all my training um and i just carried on with the magic and i and i, I i've just uh, it just kind of i've never let it down i've always i've always been fascinated by magic um and i don't think i'd ever let it let it go because good there's a there's a fascination with it it's that childlike i know something you don't know yeah and it's and it's another form of entertainment that i love because it's live same for the hypnosis when i do the hypnosis shows it's it's a live thing, and I and I still love live theatre. I still love theatre. If I can, I'll go to the theatre once a month. Um, I'll go into the West End and go and see a show. I went and saw The Illusionists um, oh, last sweet. week. At, How was at it? The Shaftesbury Avenue. Yeah, it was very very good. Um, so I'll try and go to the theatre because I still love theatre, but I just love the performance aspect, and I just kind of kept it going. And 
it, yeah, it kind of works. It's very hard trying to keep two jobs going because obviously they do clash. Sure. Um, but um, yeah, it's good fun. I, I enjoy it. I do it. And it's kind of uh, doing the magic is kind of my social life as well because I, I enjoy going to do the event. I enjoy going to have the event because you're meeting people, you're entertaining people, you're getting paid at the end of the day. And it's kind of a social thing for me as well. For sure, especially like close-up magic that you do. It's yeah. very personal, and like yeah. you're, you're right there, and yeah, that's that's yeah, pretty good. Absolutely. That's a good connection, absolutely. you know. Yeah, I think I, I, I don't get me wrong. I, I don't want to take it the wrong way. I don't. I, I'm not into the bigger stage illusions. I'm, I, I find them. I, I find them good. Um, it's like escapology. I, I, I kind of find it very one-sided. You either escape or you don't with escapology. Sure, uh, makes sense. And with the illusions, I kind of like the inti- intimacy. I don't like that distance between you and them. Um, so if I do a stage show, I mean, I've got a stage show next weekend. Um, I do a mentalist act. So I do oh, cool. you know, things. Yeah, people ask people to do drawings, tell them what their drawings are. Um, you know, get somebody to think of a famous person and tell them what they're thinking of. So you've got that connection. It's a little bit more parlor magic as opposed to illusions um which is kind of adapted really for me just doing the the hypnosis side of it and getting into the mentalism side of it so but i still i I love doing it i I really do i do get a kick out of it and i i I enjoy it when i know i've got a wedding at the weekend or i've got a party i go right you know i'm going to enjoy this it's going to be a laugh it's going to be a giggle and it's always a challenge it's always a good laugh it's a great time sure sure and uh, like i love that you're a showman because it shows, like, you from an actor to... it's. I don't think anyone can be a magician. I think you can learn tricks and stuff, but there's also this extra, like, it yes. factor, you know, that you have to be personal um, and you have uh, to... I totally, I totally agree with you. I totally agree with you. I think there's got to be... There has to be a fascination there. Yep. But it's, 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 it's trying to... Uh, there's endless amounts of people that I know that are very good performers, but they haven't got it. Yep. I don't know what I don't know what it is. If you put them on a stage, you wouldn't look at them as opposed to some people that you bring on stage and you go, you can't take your eyes off of them. Yes. And they've got something about them. So with magic, it's you you've got to be a very powerful person. You've got to be you've got to be able to deliver. And I can teach I can teach anybody a trick in five minutes, you know, a basic trick. But it's how you perform that trick and it's how you make that connection between you and the other person. Exactly, exactly. Have a real moment. But that, that's yeah. how I first came to know. So I've seen your movies before, and I was like, "Wait, this!" It's one of those instances where you see someone on TV. You're like, "I've seen this person before, but I don't know from where." <laughs> and, and your Britain, Britain's Got Talent acts. Yeah, both of them were yeah. amazing. But dude, Thank you. even through the screen, you have that sort of thing where I'm watching it on TV, and I'm like, "This is crazy!" And I'm like, sending it to everyone. I'm like, "Guys, look at this!" And even from however many miles Florida is from London. That far away, I'm being affected by it because you have that sort of energy about you, and it's just it's super fun to watch. No, thank you. It was it was fun to do because I mean, when we did the first audition, I kind of played it purely as a stage performance. I just had to forget about the cameras, even though I'm so used to performing for cameras. Right. I had to, I had to kind of go right. I'm 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 entertaining that audience. And I'm entertaining the judges. Forget the cameras. The cameras would do what they've got to do. Right. Um, I only had key things to remember, i.e., you know, how I'm going to fan the cards out to show the cameras that all the cards are different, um, you know, for the first audition. But I purely played it for the cameras. Then the first audition came out and I looked at it and I went, do you know what? I I, I tend not to I tend not to look at myself performing. I'll watch. uh, I'll watch. uh, You know, if I've done a, a, a show and they videoed it. I watch it and I'll critique, critique it very, very strongly. Mm-hmm. But with the Britain's Got Talent, I kind of went, do you know what? That's the way to do the next audition. If I do the next audition, that's the way I'm going to do it. And I did it exactly the same way again. We only had one stipulation because it was a live show. Right. Uh, I, wanted, I wanted the camera in a certain position to do the the going through the wall because I didn't yes. want anybody. To, I didn't want anybody to see the jerk back line sure. um, that, was, that was connected to me to go through the wall. But apart from that, I played exactly the same way. It was a theatre. I played it purely for theatre. Forget about the cameras. The cameras will pick up what they've got to pick up. Um, because they originally said to me, do you want to do the second audition outside of the theatre? And I went, no. I said, I don't want to do it for TV. I want to do it purely for theatre. So I want, to stay in the, I want to stay in the theatre, entertain those people in the theatre, entertain the judges in the theatre, and see 
and see the spectacle of a theatre performance as opposed to, you know, a live link outside. I didn't want to do that. Yeah, I totally agree. It, I mean, dude, it was awesome. Awesome. Thank and, you. And I loved how you like this. <laughs> so the first time it's like, all right, magician, awesome, great act, amazing. Because I I love watching magic. I'm a big fan of it. And then in the second one, it was like, oh, he's also like this stuntman who's done I don't know maybe a hundred <laughs> things. I was like, what in the world? This is amazing. And then how you incorporated that into your second act was so cool. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you very much. No, I appreciate it. So you were a magician first as a kid, got into yeah. acting with the performing thing, then fell yeah. into stunts. Did yeah. you do your first acting gig or your first stunt gig on a movie? Uh, so my first acting, my first acting gig, um, I did a lot of TV. Cool. I did a hell of a lot. I did a hell of a lot of TV, little TV parts here and there. Um, and then my first, uh, when I was training, um, we, I was training in. Um, um, fencing and i was training in in uh, stage combat as well cool. and a guy that i worked with at the opera house um who's no longer no longer with us unfortunately a gentleman called bill hobbs and bill was a fight coordinator he did uh, the original three musketeers oh, um sweet. and um he was doing a film called rob roy with oh liam what? Neeson, yes liam Neeson and tim roth and john hurt John Hurt was in it. And he said, would you like to come along a couple of weeks in Scotland? And I went, love to. So myself, Richard, and a couple of my friends went along. And uh, we helped with the fights, et cetera, et cetera. And that was kind what? of my first little my first little taster of a film. But my first ever film that I worked on as a stuntman officially, uh, I did Blade 2. What? Yeah, that was my first... That was my. I was green. I was green as grass. And, and my first, and Blade, my Blade first two. job. Yeah, wow. it was. Um, yeah, it was Blade Two. So I went out to Prague for two weeks out in Prague, um, and I did. I did Blade Two. Yeah, it was brilliant. Absolutely Dude. brilliant. Yeah. So you're telling me your first two credits is Blade Two and a Liam Neeson movie? A Liam Neeson film. What yes. What in the yes. world? <laughs> How do you? Okay, cool. <laughs> if you can do it, jump into the deep end. Well, you know, you got to go in at some point, but. Um, I, I, I didn't really know much about the, I knew about, you know, the, the, how the films worked, all that sort of stuff and how, how it was very, very, you know, laborious and how it could be a lot of sitting around and waiting for it. Oh yes. But just, just, just to go and see how they put the fight together and how it was cut, how it was edited, where they filmed it from was a very interesting concept for me because I was supposed, so used to theater right. um, and sword play for theater that it was a totally different kind of concept um, in the fact that, you know, it's a little bit easier because you're playing to camera and you can cut and edit it. Whereas with on stage, you've got to remember the whole fight routine right. and you've got to get the whole hype, the whole fight routine right uh, in one go because, you know, you're, you've got no camera to go, oh, sorry, I've gone wrong here. Yeah, one second, Let's back, back one. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, it was good. It was good. It was good fun. Then to go out and do Blade... Because I loved the I loved the first blade. I thought Same. the first blade was fantastic. Uh, and then to go out and did a, we did a fight out on blade. I was playing these masked. There was about twenty of us all masked up. We had um, uh, like gas masks on. We were attacking. We were attacking Wesley Snipes. Yes. And he was taking us taking us out, throwing us over balustrade and kicking us and throwing us all over the place. So it was good in that sense. Um, uh, and I got to get, then see another side of it with the you know, the sort of unarmed combat, mixing it with, you know, armed combat, et cetera, et cetera. But so, yeah, it was good. It was, it was nice. It was an experience. And then, and then it just kind of went from there, really. It just kind of just blew up. So, Dude. yeah, it, it has, you have good years, you have bad years, but I've been pretty consistent for sort of, sort of 20, 21 years now. Oh, so let's yeah. see, I'm 28. So, uh, almost as long as I've been alive. There you go. You Good see. job. <laughs> there you go. Make me feel old. Yeah, that's a, but remind you of your mortality. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. I mean, you got kicked by a blade. That's pretty neat. Yeah, Did... I got kicked in the face. I got my legs swept away. I got thrown over a Boom. set of steps. I, yeah, I thought it was. Yeah, that's what I. Different. If I were you, this is why I can't be you. Because if I was, I'd just be like, I've been kicked by a blade. I've done this with Liam Neeson. I've done this. <laughs> These are all the things. Like, I had Harley Durst on the show uh, a little right. bit ago. 
And Harley yeah. was like, yeah, I, uh, I got kicked in the chest by Jai Courtney. I was like, Captain Boomerang kicked you in the chest. Dude, write this down. Right? Get this framed. Yeah. Like, let's yeah. figure this out. How crazy your yeah. life is. Yeah, I know. I know it's weird, isn't it? Dude. It's very strange. It's so very strange. What goes in? So, like, how do you become a stuntman? There's got to be schooling for it because it's a specific so, skill. Yeah. So, in this country, we have, we now have the British Stunt Register. We used to have the Equity Stunt Register, which is the JISC. Mm-hmm. Um, but we've now we've now made our own register because we left awesome. Equity. We're still members of Equity, um, but we've gone on our own. We're making it more independent. So the same grading system is exactly the same. Cool. Uh, it's six sports to a very high standard. So oh. to give you an to give an example, there are certain categories. So let's just say there's a a high fall category. Uh, a skill and agility, a fight category, a driving category, a horses category, a water category. Uh, what else is there? Water category. Uh, horses are done. Fight category. So within those categories, you're you're not allowed more than two skills out of those categories. So oh. let's just say let's just say you're a really good fighter. Mm-hmm. Let's just say you've got so much experience in martial arts, judo, jujitsu, MMA, whatever it is. But you're only allowed out of those all those skills, two of those. So let's just say you put forward judo and fencing. So now you need to find another four areas uh, of skills. So my areas of skills were skydiving, oh. which I had to, I had to do a minimum of two hundred jumps, a minimum Goodness. of two hundred jumps. Yeah. So skydiving, scuba diving was dive master, which is paddy which is just below instructor mm-hmm. uh any martial art was a black belt standard wow uh, any martial art or boxing was a competitive standard successful competitive standard uh fencing was grade oh, i think it was grade i think it's grade eight if i remember rightly which was gold medal standard for epee foil and saber all oh. three dis- all three disciplines um, I, had, I did gymnastics, which was the stunt registers qualification. So I had to do uh, all the floor, uh, high bar, uh, parallel bars, pommel, uh, trampet, uh, rings. Good Lord. And you have to get a certain grade. You have to get, I think it's something like a 75% mark for everything you do or above to pass it. There was a swimming category that's now... Oh, they've changed it now. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's so so hard. I mean, you've got to be you've got to be county standard to pass it. And you have to be fish. Yeah, yeah. You've got to be aquaman just to get past the first yeah. level. Um, uh, and you had to do a breath hold and that sort of stuff. Um, so I did skydiving, scuba diving, fencing, kickboxing, trampolining. Trampolining was gold medal standard. Uh, and wow. That was a, that was, that was a, a qualification that was set by the trampolining federation. Um, and now they have to do three, it's three 10 bounce routines and they're allowed to pick two of them. Um, oh. And I did skydiving, scuba, fencing, kickboxing, trampoline, gymnastics, swimming. And then afterwards, after I got on, uh, I put in the miscellaneous as well, which was water skiing because I did a lot of my water skiing stuff. Um, I learned to water ski prior to training for the register mm-hmm. and then i went out to florida i went out to tampa hey, enough. i know where that is <laughs> uh, i went out to orange lake uh, oh right on. I, I, I trained with a guy called ron thompson who was at that time he got the world record for the longest jump uh on off a um you know a ski ramp wow uh, and he, he taught me slalom tricks and jumps and mono ski slalom uh, so I did that afterwards and also I've done driving and, and I kind of learned to ride as well so I can handle a horse. I'm not, I'll never put myself down as a horseman, mm-hmm. but I can get on a horse and I can ride a horse, uh, quite competently. Um, Dude. and that was it. Yeah. So it, it took me, uh, nearly four and a half years to do it. Yeah, I bet. All from, those things take time. Yeah, before scratch. he can even qualify. That's the crazy. Well, part. I went. I kind of went out to America to break the back of the first one because I went out and I did my skydiving out there. I went out to uh, Lake Wales. Nice. Um, and I trained out in Lake Wales with a guy called Mick Hall, who owned uh, Sebastian Skydiving Centre. And I'm still in. I'm still in touch with Mick and Jill, who used to run it. They they were both English and they moved out there and they ran the drop zone. So I literally 
got all my qualification to be able to jump solo within a week. And then I just banged wow. out a load of jump. I banged out a load of jumps. Uh, and then I went back home for a week and then I came back out to America and I just, just jumped. I just jumped. That's all I did. I, I, I was like a drop zone. I was like a drop zone bum. I just basically, <laughs> whatever the plane was going up, I was jumping. That's all I was doing was just jumping, jumping. I was jumping with formation people. I was jumping on my own. So I got those jumps. And then I was coming back. And then at the same time, I was trampolining on a Monday, a Monday night and a Friday night. And then at the same time on the weekends, I was training in my kickboxing. And then most weekends, I was probably training in trampolining or, or uh, fencing. Uh, and then literally I'd be ticking them off. And as I got the qualifications, I'd tick them off, tick them off, tick them off, and I'd move on to the next one. So as I was coming to the end of one qualification, I'd start the next qualification. Nice. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it becomes a way of life. I mean, I didn't really have any friends for four years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wherever I was going, I was either scuba diving, I had mates there, or I was trampolining, or I was swimming, or I was you know, fencing and God knows what. Um, and I mean, touch wood, I'm, I'm so glad I did it because I've made some really good friends and, and I've travelled the world and, and seen things that people would never ever see and, and done things they never ever would do. So it's it's been an experience and it's been fantastic. Yeah, I bet. And you, I mean, with that sort of level of qualification, you got to want it pretty bad. Yes, you have to. And nowadays, it's they have increased it even more now. I mean, they've made it a lot more difficult, a lot more difficult, and people are still getting on. And some of these guys that are getting on now, I mean, you've got to remember, I got on 21 years ago, so I'm 47. No, you're so not. So I got, yeah, <laughs> on late, late, a late sort of 20s. Um, and there's guys getting on now that are sort of 19, 20, 21, and they've got all the qualifications, and they are Ooh, good. Wow. Some, there's some amazing trickers on there, some amazing guys, you know, they're doing punch double fronts and, you know, off the floor. I mean, they're just, uh, they're incredible. They're incredible performers. They're agile. Um, so, yeah, there's some really good performers. But, you see, I say it to a lot of people because I get a lot of phone calls from people saying, you know, I've been given your name by a friend of mine. I want to be a stunt man. I want to be a stunt woman. And I go, right, first thing is get a job that you can pick up and drop. Because right. you're not going to be work- you're not going to be working all the time. I'm not working all the time, um, and uh, and I've got a bit of a niche really in the fact that I'm one of the bigger guys. There's only sort of half a dozen people on the register that are still big, sure. you know, sort of you know, sort of fifteen stone plus. Um, so I've got a bit of a niche market, um, but the, the 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 problem being is. I'll get put forward to play little roles, little TV like roles, or you know, like Fast and Furious playing Oaks, or God knows what. Right. So, but the problem being is you'll have your little part, and you're it's called being burnt. So your face is burnt. So they can't really use you for other stuff. So oh. you won't be on. So you won't be on that job for long. So unless you're kind of mingling in the background, you won't you won't be on that job for six months or five months, like a lot of these guys are, because they're a generic size, look, and stance. Right. Whereas. I stick out like a sore thumb. Sure. So it's in it, it can in, in some ways it's good for you because it's good for the show reel, but in other ways it's not because you might not be on that job for longer. So you have to kind of job around, as it were. Um, so yeah, it's it, so I always say to people, get a job that you can pick up and you can drop because you're going to need it. Because sometimes it'll it will be quiet and sometimes it will be manic. Like at the moment, it's absolutely manic, and we're desperate for people. Whereas a couple of years ago, it went very, very quiet. And touch wood, I was, I was still very lucky. I was on the job. I was doing uh, Rogue One, and it was a very quiet time for people. Uh, it was just, it was just the way the industry had gone. So, I always say to people, yeah, get a job that you, you can have. Hence the fact the magic. I've always continued with it. Right. I've always worked, you know, weekends. I've always worked in the evenings and that sort of stuff. Um, and I say that if you want it badly enough, you're you'll do it you will do it i agree but even though you've got the qualifications it still doesn't make you a stunt performer sure because you know you could get in front of that camera and it you could you could freeze you could just not have it in you just uh, you know it, it's just one of those things it is it is one of those things and don't don't get me wrong i'm not a, i'm not a daredevil i i, I know <laughs> You know, I, you found I know your limits. Dangerous. Yeah, I know what's dangerous and what isn't, and you have to trust the people around you, and 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 you, you've got to you've got to have that trust. It's a real community, really, because you know the people that. If I'm doing a fire job, I know the people that I want to put me out. 
Right. And if I'm on a, if I'm on a set, I go, yeah, I, I'll, I'll put you and you and you. Can you boys be with me? Yeah, can you? And I know exactly they're going to be there. Um, because some people might freeze, some people might, you know, panic, some people might not do what they're supposed to do. You do not so, want that when you're on fire. No, not exactly. So <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's a very hard thing, really. And it's the problem being is now though, when I got on the register, there were 230 people. That's 21 years ago. Now we've wow. got nearly five. We've got nearly 500 people on the register now. Ooh. Yeah. Man. So in those 21 years. It's it's boomed and and I think it's boomed because of the internet. I agree because because of social media. Um, when I was training to the stunt man, I had a photocopied piece of paper from Equity which told me my qualifications, and I went round to skydiving clubs. I went down to this. I went round to there. You know, scuba diving clubs. Blah blah blah. blah. I said, "This is what I'm doing." And they went, "Okay, we've never met a stunt man before." Now every club you go to, oh yeah, we've got so and so, so and so. Here we got. 12 people training for the register because people are now getting on the register, going on their Instagram, going on their Twitter, going on their Facebook. They've got 20,000 followers and they're going, oh, I'm now on the register or I'm trained to be a stuntman. I can earn this much money. I've just been on set with Harrison Ford. Here I am with a picture of me dressed up as a stormtrooper. Right. Or blah, 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 blah. I'm doing this. And now all those 20,000 followers, a good 10% are going, I want some of that. So right. now they're all finding <laughs> out how to do it. So they're all training. But, a lot of them fall by the wayside. Uh, For sure. But, but the percentage, you're always looking at an increase of being 10 15%. So you're always going to have people getting on and it's going to get more and more and more. So I don't know if it's going to dilute it a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. The good will always rise to the top. That's right. Um, but it's it's uh, it's it's been wider in the industry. And it's good at the moment because it's just gone bang in the UK. You know, we've got loads happening over here at the moment. They're talking about now a Star Wars TV series, you know, obviously yep. Game, of Game of Thrones over here. We've mm -hmm. got Fast and Furious over here. We've got Fantastic Beasts coming back. We've got Wonder Woman doing reshoots at the moment. Spider-Man's just been done. It's going, it's going, it. it's going bang. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's going, it's going mad at the moment, which is great, which is good. I agree. I think it's awesome. And as an audience yeah. member, I just, I mean, everybody wins in the end. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, absolutely. That's crazy. Absolutely. 500 people at that level. Yeah. Them... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as I say, you know, but out of those 500 people, you'll probably see the same maybe 350, something like that, on bigger shouts. Like sure. I was on, Malef on Maleficent last year, Maleficent 2 last year. I met a lot of guys I've never even met before. Um, and now I'm at a coordinator level. I'm getting lots of people send me emails saying, look, I've just got on the register. Here's my page. You know, if anything comes up, if I like an observation day, blah, 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 blah. So I'm getting lots of people, you know, sending me their information. So it's quite nice in that respect. So you get to see them, but you don't know what they're like as a performer. So right. And that's really important. A, yeah, it's a bit of a hard thing because then you can't, you can't recommend them. You know, if another coordinator says, what do you think of this person? You go, I don't know because I haven't seen them perform yet. And I don't want to put my name to that person. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's it's a hard thing. So you tend to go to the ones that you know and you've worked with and you you can trust. You go, yeah, he's a really good guy in a car. Yeah, he's really good on a horse. Yeah, he'd be good. Unless you're really cornered in the corner to double somebody and you've only got a specific look. Right. So this is the thing. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a strange old business. It's a funny business. Yeah. A, lot of people think it's, a lot of people think it's very romantic. It really isn't romantic, as everybody thinks, when you're standing in a field covered in horse poo, yeah. eating, your, <laughs> eating your food out of a box with a plastic knife and fork, waiting to get hit by a horse. Yep. Uh, yep. It's not as romantic as, as people think, but some days it's good, some days it's great. That's right, and the good days, they, they make up for the bad ones. I, Absolutely. I agree. It's like Absolutely. Everyone wants to be an actor, but nobody wants to do 16-hour days. No. Yeah. Yep. No, absolutely, absolutely not. So you know, any injuries do come into it. So I bet. You know, you, if you get if you get injured, you know, and you're taking five months out or two months out or three weeks out, and you know, and you want to get recovery, because I'm the worst patient in the world. I'll come out of anaesthetic <laughs> and go, "What time? When can I go back to work?" And they're like, "No, whoa, 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 hold on, you can't do that. You just broken your collarbone. Yeah. yeah, can I go back to work? Can I go back to work next week? I won't do a fight. I'll just do running around. Yeah, okay, you can do that." So, it stopped yeah. clicking, so I'm good, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm the worst person to have injuries. I'm terrible. I'm awful. <laughs> What's the worst injury you've had? Um, 
do you know what? I'm touching wood again. I've been all right. I've, I've snapped my I snapped my collarbone in three places. Uh, but I was back to work within four weeks. Of they course. It. <laughs> they, put, they put a bar down it, and I had about 18 screws put in there. Um, I snapped my left bicep. Oh, no. Um, How'd you do that? Which, yeah, it actually it just ruptured. It just totally went. It just oh, went no. wear and tear, and it just snapped. Uh, and I was out for about... Four days. Uh, no, it was <laughs> about eight hours. No, no. Oh. Uh, I, was out for, I was out for about... Uh, I, I think I did about six to eight weeks recovery. Nice. Uh, I, did, I did my ankle in on a job. But I didn't. Act, I didn't actually take time off. I took a couple of days off to try and get the swelling down, and then I just strapped it, uh, and I worked on it. And then when I finished the job, I was on Exodus at the side, um, <laughs> and I just strapped it, strapped it, strapped it, and then ran around all, all the time with the, like a cold foot. Um, and I've done both of my meniscuses on my knees. I've Ooh. had those both operated on, um, and they take about six weeks to recover. Uh, they're not too bad. But yeah, I've got about twenty odd stitches in my head. Oh, um, no. I've been being hit various different places and different times. Um, broken fingers. Uh, of course. But that's about it. That's about it, really. That's it. That's, that's nothing. Quite, quite, Please walk, quite, yeah, walk yeah, it off, Matt. Nothing. Walk it off. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but a, a bit of sticky tape does wonders. Yeah, the foot you can hide easy. In fingers, exactly. you got ten of them. So like, yeah, let's exactly. be honest. Don't worry about that. You don't need yeah, them all. <laughs> Dude. That's nuts. How, how many times have you been set on fire? I like to ask stuntmen that question because it's uh, a few. How many times have I been set on fire? One, two, three. Hundred. Four, five. Five, uh, about five or six times. And that's in your spare time? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's without tests. Yeah. yeah. Tests. <laughs> that's so to I'm wake up in doing, the morning. I'm actually doing one for... Um, the company that sponsored me, Fire XO, they've just come up with a new fire extinguisher. Nice. Um, so I'm I'm doing a test for them in a few weeks' time, and I think I've I, I think the product is absolutely amazing. I hope it's so. It's absolutely incredible. It's so so good. Um, and they've got this new fire extinguisher, this new liquid, um, and Ooh. it puts stuff out. I mean, instantly. It's it's incredible. Absolutely incredible stuff. So I'm going to go to their workshop and uh, and do a test for them. But uh, they've got sponsorship now and they've got backing, which is awesome. And I think the product's going to go bang. So oh, wow. um, yeah, it's 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 good to do. You know, I've got. I've, they came over just before I did uh, the second audition for uh, BGT, uh, and I used one of their fire extinguishers on stage, funny enough, to put the ant and deck stunt doubles out. Oh, sweet. Um, so, yeah, and they're brilliant, really nice guys. But, uh, yeah, so, yeah, quite a few times I've put fire. And fire's a very, fire's a very dangerous thing because it's very unpredictable. So you've got really yeah. got to be on the ball for it and your preparation's got to be good for it. And, obviously, when we did the, the Britain's Got Talent, the first audition, uh, with my mate Matt Sharon, who walked across the stage. Yes. Um, we rehearsed that literally three times the week before we did that. And we knew that we had a 25-second window and we measured the stage so we knew how far he could walk and how slow he could walk. And also, I wanted him to be put out without fire extinguishers. I wanted him to be put out with a blanket. Oh. So when Amanda, Amanda Holden, one of the judges, had her eyes closed, when he appeared and he disappeared, she never heard anything. Oh, nice. So Smart. she never heard a damn thing. So when she opened her eyes, she went, "What? What? What, what just happened? What just happened?" Yeah. So there was no, there was no sound effect of, psh, you know, fire extinguishers putting him out. So literally, he appeared. He walked across the stage casually, and he disappeared. And that was it. He was gone. Dude. So yeah, we we kind of I wanted that, and that was the most one of the most important things in the first audition. That I just wanted him to appear casually, walk across in a suit, you know, altering his cuffs and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. No mask. No, no gloves, no mask. Just walk across and disappear, and that was it. Gone. Dude. So, and it and it works. It really did work. The audience, the audience reaction was fantastic. Yeah, it, my reaction was insane. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that, "What is going on? Is, that, <laughs> is it a special kind of blanket you have to use for something like that?" Uh, we did a no. We used a fire blanket, but what we did was we had uh, in the wings. We cleared the wings out. We had a massive tarpaulin a huge waterproof um, um, uh, blanket uh, and we doused the blanket down with uh, a special uh, water substance that we use. Nice. And, and it was huge. It was like three times the size of a, of a double-sized sheet. Uh, and we had two guys standing 
in the wings, holding it up. And he walked straight into it, knelt down and laid down and they wrapped him up like a mummy. Oh, that's uh, weird. And that was it. That was it. He was out. He was out pretty quickly. Man, that's yeah. really cool. Yeah. No, it was good. It was great. It worked really, really well. The guys were fantastic. They were absolutely brilliant. All of them, all the guys that helped me were just brilliant. And I used them all on the second audition as well. I saw the picture you posted with your team. It's it's so cool. Yeah. I like I love behind yeah. the scenes stuff. So like yeah. no, I, they I, were, movies they were and all great the people. Bunch. Yeah, yeah, they were a fantastic, fantastic bunch. But yeah, it was a lot of guys. It was a lot of guys because he had one, two, three, four, five, six. So there was eight, eight guys plus me on the first audition. Man. Uh, and the second audition, we had one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We had nine of us on the second audition plus two guys that were special effects. So there was 11 of us plus me. Nice. Yeah. It worked. Yeah. It was a great Yeah, no, it was brilliant. It was very, very good. Yeah, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Great for the show, real. Yeah, oh, for sure. And then, <laughs> and then I know I remember you posted a video uh, a little bit ago of you doing like this sweet little peel-out thing in your car and you grab a little starburst off the cone. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, one, <laughs> awesome. Really, it's super cool. I've watched that like 20 times. I'm like, look at this. I'm like showing my wife. I'm like, look, that, look what he did. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm wondering... two, that's a two two seventy. That is, yeah, two seventy. So you're taking a J turn into a handbrake turn. Dude, yeah. How many cars have you yeah. wrecked learning to do that? <laughs> quite a few. Yeah, yeah, quite a few. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a guy Brendan who's out in uh, Ireland. Uh, he's got a stunt school out in Ireland, a dr- driving stunt school out in Ireland, because it's very hard to get the space in England. Um, sure. Obviously, because of sound and all that sort of stuff. It's not like America. We've got masses of expanse of land. Um, and, uh, yeah, I go out there and go and do a bit of training. But I was purely training on that for a film, a, a TV series that I did called Bulletproof that was over here. Um, and they wanted me to do uh, a 720 in a car. Oh. Like they've shot like they've shot the back wheel out and the car goes into a con- out of control spin. Right. But I had to do I had to do the spin in a in a street. So I didn't want to clip the curb. Oh, no. So I was literally just learning to get the car around on its on its axis. Um, so yeah, learning little tricks to do that and get it round and get it pre- precise and get the precision of it. So I knew that when I did it on the day, we could do it, you know, multiple times and me not trash the car because we only had two cars. Yeah. Is there any? Do they do anything special to the cars to do those kinds of stunts? Yeah, yeah, we did. We uh, we had a hydraulic handbrake that means you can lock the back up quite easily. Ah. Uh, and also we did. We had one slick tire. Uh, so I put one slick tire on the driver's side reverse, uh, the driver's side rear, uh, so that it had no bite. It was it was literally a slick tire like you'd see on a on a Formula One car. Right. Uh, so it's got no grip. So the grip, it, unless you you bring it back with the brake, uh, it, it does slide. I mean, we put two on there. My God, it was uncontrollable. It was like tourmaline beam. <laughs> I was rolling all over, but I had no control of the car, so I was like, no, oh, no. just have one on there. Just one. <laughs> that would be brilliant. But literally, we did, in the end, we did a complete uh, 360. We did a 420. Now, for me to do a 420 in one of the vehicles at Brendan's place, I was doing about 60 mile an hour, 70 mile an hour. Oh. With one slick with one slick tyre on, I was doing it at 32 miles an hour. Good Lord. And yeah. you didn't wreck it? No, no, didn't wreck it at all. I what did, a pro. Uh, I did about twelve takes. Yeah, I did it on a, on a. We had twenty-two feet. I had twenty-two feet width, and it was an estate car as well, which was even worse. But uh, yeah, I did it. Yeah, I did it. Did it. Uh, yeah, twelve, thirteen times we did it. It was great. It's fantastic. That's amazing. Have you ever yeah. been on set or been in one of those cars like in like speaking of Fast and the Furious when they like go up and flip and crash and stuff like that? Yeah, yeah. Done a rollover. What? Yeah, done a rollover. Yeah, done a rollover in a car. Did How it, do you not a... get hurt doing that? <laughs> You're 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 braced into that car tighter than anything. Oh I mean, really? You've got, yeah, you've got neck brace on. You've got a roll cage in the vehicle. The vehicle's been prepped um, purely for doing that. Purely for doing that role. Um, you got yeah, you've got everything. You've got every possible caution. You've got isolators so that the car won't catch on fire. You've got a special battery on there. You've only got enough fuel to literally get you up to the ramp. Um, so yeah, the whole thing's been the whole thing. You've got. Um, uh, a crash crash proof uh petrol tank 
Uh, yeah, everything's prepped on the vehicle. So it's, it's, there's still things that can go wrong. Obviously, there's things that can go wrong with anything. Sure. But the precaution has been there. Uh, the roll cage is the most important thing, yeah. Is it fun? Yeah, it does get your heart going a little bit. I bet. <laughs> you're not, that's not a feeling you're supposed to have, uh, flipping a car. Man. Yeah, it's good fun. It's good fun, yeah. Every time I see those, I'm like, how? Because the car's moving, <laughs> and it's flipping, and I know there's somebody driving. But now I Yeah, know. sometimes if it's very, very aggressive, sometimes they might cannon the car. Uh, they might just literally just cannon it with nobody in there, so they use the special effects, but... Nine times out of ten, they want people to drive it, especially if it's going to be just a like a, pipe, a pipe ramp, so it's coming up and just corkscrewing. So nine times out of ten, it'll be a driver. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. Chris, did, you, fun. did you double as Hagrid in Harry Potter? I did. Yes, I did. I did on the motorbike. Yeah, we did a sequence where uh, Dude. Uh, he was coming down a, a big sort of ramp. So I wore the costume, and then we, uh, then we did a lot of stuff on the... Uh, we had a massive gimbal, huge gimbal that had the motorbike on there. And then I either do it with a stunt man or with Daniel. Uh, so, yeah, it was that was fun as well. Uh, the costume was massive. I mean, it was huge. I yeah. think it weighed about, <laughs> sort of, probably weighed about sort of 30 kilos uh, with the head and the gloves and everything. It wasn't the most comfortable thing to wear, but yeah, it was fun. It was a good time. That was a long time ago now. But being back at Leeds now, it's a bit of a nostalgia, really, because I'm in the same studio at the moment uh, that I was all those years ago. So, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. It's gone very, very fast. So, let's see. Kicked by Blade, saved Harry Potter. We're doing pretty yeah. good right now. We're doing pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I know. Another day, another dollar, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> you know, as you do. That's a that's a Tuesday. Yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. it is what it as is. It, as everybody said, it beats working for a living. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and then there are other people that's like, I will take the safety of my office instead of rolling in a car. Yeah, it's exactly. Like, you know, different exactly. strokes for different folks, I suppose. Face your fears, live your dreams. Yeah, that's right. As long as <laughs> you do recover after an yes. X amount of time and you're back in, you're good. Absolutely. All's absolutely. well that ends well. Yeah, absolutely. That's amazing. I So I remember, speaking of those, when I saw you on Britain's Got Talent, I was like, I know this dude from somewhere. I'm pretty sure I saw The Rock throw him into the ceiling. Yeah, yeah, I got, I got the, I got the stuffing kicked out of me. Yeah. That, that, that took, uh, that was three. I think we did three days filming, three, two or three days filming on that sequence. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That so, was. So uh, how many takes did you days. have to get? Oh into my this? god! <laughs> I went into that. The first wall, I think I broke. I think we did that five times. Oh man! <laughs> through that table, I think I went through three tables. I think I went into the ceiling twice but the window going into the window oh my god oh my god <laughs> you just moved in that, you're like i live oh, here now gee, that that was a hard window it just didn't flex at all i think i went into that three times oh man yeah i got the stuff that kicked out of me even dwayne said to me you've earned your money today mate there you go i was like i said i've earned my i've earned my money i tell you i was i was <laughs> i was knackered i was exhausted yeah and i was bruised and battered and but yeah, it was fun. It was a good sequence. It was a great sequence to do. It was a lot, a lot of fun. Yeah, that, t- having talked to so many people that like have worked on movies behind the scenes, and obviously I'm obsessed with the process. Uh, when I first saw that scene, the first thing I thought was like, "Oh man, how many times?" <laughs> because yeah, it's such a specific yeah. stunt, and there's so much going on. Yeah, and then I just think yeah. about you getting thrown into stuff over and over, and the amount of time well, it must have taken to reset. The funny thing was, when we were doing the sequence, when I was going to go through the t- table, mm-hmm. we did the rehearsals about four days before, and I was working with Tannehoy, who is uh, Dwayne's stunt double. Yes. And Tannehoy was doing the, the gag with me. I was on a wire to be able to do a front summy through the table. And my feet hit the ceiling, and we pulled the whole ceiling down. Oh, man. And the art gap company had to come in and redo the, the, the ceiling. So when we came to the, the, the filming of it, I said, my feet are going to go through this ceiling again. They went, no, it won't. No, it won't. I said, they will. They're going to go through the ceiling. <laughs> I said, I'm telling you that now. It's going to, no, no, it'll be all right. And literally, that take where you saw me going into the ceiling, the ceiling comes down, <laughs> that, wasn't, that wasn't meant to happen. Oh, but really? It fell, it, no, it fell on all the crew, Dwayne and everybody. Everybody was safe. We were all kind of laughing about it. We all had to get out because it was loads of dust and rubbish and God knows what. Uh, but, yeah, that wasn't really supposed to happen, that going through the ceiling. Wow. Yeah. Hey, it made it in. Yeah, no, it was great. It was good. And Dwayne was fantastic. He was absolutely brilliant. He was an absolute gem. He was a top, top, top guy. That's so cool. 
Yeah. Dude, that reminds me of like, uh, so like when episode one came out, there's like this really famous story of they built all of these sets and then Liam Neeson got on set and he's like 6'4". And yeah. could, couldn't fit through some of the doorways, so they yeah. had to rebuild everything else to fit yeah. there, except it yeah. was your foot in the ceiling. So, yeah. not bad, <laughs> not bad at all. Yeah, man. Speaking on that, you were in Star Wars. That's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I was in Star Wars. I been in a few. Yeah, I, yeah. I did the first one, Force Awakens. I had a little. Uh, I really got really good friends with JJ Abraham because he's really into his magic. Yeah. So I started performing magic for him, and we used to sit in between takes and talk magic, and then I hypnotized people. And we'd nice. Have a laugh. Um, and uh, yeah, it was it was great. I had a little. I played a bounty hunter in it, but they didn't really feature me too much, which was all right because it meant I could still stay on and do the job. Right. Um, uh, so we did the big shootout in the back lot where all the stormtroopers were attacking us, uh, and then. Liang, who played the stormtrooper with the Tonfa, yes. who attacked. Yeah, we did that big scene, um, and then I got cast as as um, a Lieutenant Calfor, yes. which was quite nice. So yeah, I, I, I did that, and we were on that for sort of on and off for about six or seven months, which was fantastic. And I got to go to the Maldives with it, which was lovely. Oh, you got to um, go, cool. Yeah, I got out to the Maldives for ten days and did the sequence where we're all on the island, sort of bit and running through the water and. So it was, yeah, it was good. It was a great, it was a great experience. Yeah, it was a bit, bit surreal running around with stormtroopers, you know, with laser guns and all that yeah. sort of stuff. And, uh, but yeah, it was good. It was good fun. And you got a great hero shot. Yeah, I got a fantastic hero shot. Yeah, always got to get the hero shots. Yeah, <laughs> always. I think about that every time. I'm like, there it is. He said, come on. I was like, oh, yes, that right there. That is, that is Star Wars history going on. Yeah. Absolutely. So yeah, it was, it was nice. And I, I liked, I enjoyed Rogue. I did enjoy Rogue. Um, Same, I, I loved it. Yeah, I wasn't too keen on the last Star Wars. Sure. Uh, it went off uh, off rail a bit. I don't know what the next one's going to be like. Uh, I wasn't involved in that at all. Um, different coordinator. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see. You no. Know, it'd be interesting to see where they take it and what they do with it next. Um, but, yeah, it was a bit. I wasn't a, I wasn't a real Star Wars geek, as in a real Star Wars fan. Mm-hmm. But. Harrison to to work with Harrison Ford was great. Cause I love I love the Indiana Jones films. Same. I, the Indiana Jones films uh, uh, that kind of inspired my stunt side of my life. I think, and that was um, I loved them. I loved the Indiana Jones character. Uh, so to work with him was a lot of fun as well. Yeah, I bet. I mean, he's like one of the last movie stars. You know, like the yeah. original old ilk. I mean, it, it's it's Harrison Ford. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. pretty good. And then, did, yeah. you, did you work on The Foreigner? Uh, I've heard fuck. that you did, but maybe not. Yes. The one with Jackie Chan. Yes, we did the explosion uh, of the bus uh, over the bridge. Oh, of sweet. Yeah, yeah, we did that sequence. Dude, that's yeah. pretty cool. Speaking of stunt yeah. teams. Yeah, that was good. That was a good sequence, that was. That was a Man. great sequence. And, and my God, that bus went bang. Wow. Yeah, it did. <laughs> yeah, that was great. So was really, really what was, what would you say is the most dangerous stunt you've done so far? <sighs> most dangerous stunt I've ever done before. Uh, it's a hard one really, because the funny thing is you can do, you can do sort of, you know, a fall and not get hurt. And then you can do a fight routine and get smashed in the face and get stitches in your face. Yeah. So it's a, it's a bit of a strange thing. It's a risk element. I did a nice little fo- high fall for a job called, uh, uh, Ruby, uh, uh, what was it called? It was called not Ruby and, uh, not wiring the blood. It wasn't wiring the blood. It all blends into one with me now. Uh, it was a period piece and I had to come out of a, uh, it was about 45 foot up. I had to come out of a, oh. of a, of a doorway hit a pitch roof go off the pitch roof and do a high fall which was a really nice gag to do because it was a bit awkward it wasn't like just doing a high fall which was a bit sort of it was a bit it was a bit bit different really it was a nice job to do but i did a nice gag they never ever used it on uh zorro i had to jump off of a moving train move a moving oh, steam train sweet. yeah come off the top of the moving state of steam train and they never used it they never, they never put it in the film of course which, yeah it was the best stuff. yeah it's gutted really which was quite nice but fast and furious i've got some nice gags coming up so hopefully 
they'll get to do those uh, and they'll put those in and hopefully I can put those in my as uh, as a few another sweaty moment in life. Yeah, for real. Add it to the list. I yeah, like, I yeah. like it. What was the most fun stunt you've done? The most fun stunt? Uh, oh, that's a hard question. The most fun stunt? I've done I've done a massive, great big uh, food fight. Uh, oh. A huge food fight, which was great fun to work on. Just literally 20 stunt men and women having a food fight in a food hall. That and sounds it was, awesome. It was brilliant. But, you know, the one thing I've always wanted to do, I've always wanted to do a Western bar brawl. And Ooh. I've never got the opportunity to do it. Yes. I've never got the opportunity to do it. And I've Yet. always wanted to do it. Yet. We'll get you there. Oh, well, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed there's a Western coming up and I get to do a bar brawl. I've always wanted to do it. You know, the old casino tables and that yeah. sort of stuff. Somebody getting dragged on the bar. I've always wanted to do that. Oh, always dude, that'd that. be so great. Smashing bottles yeah. on people's heads and yeah, throwing them out a, the front window. That's it. Great. Yeah, that's the one I want. That's the one I want. Now, the question is, do you want to be the one throwing someone out the window or do you want to get thrown out the window? Oh, I'd love to get thrown out the window. Of course. Yeah, great. Of course. <laughs> You're a pro <laughs> already. <laughs> Dude, you just show them the the fast window, and you're like, "This one, I've done yeah. this, so I can go I'll through." Tell you what, what was a good fight to do? Uh, the fight in the church in Kingsman. Oh yes, you were in that. That was a that was a fantastic fight. Yeah, we did uh, two Ooh, weeks on that. Oh, nice. That was brilliant. That on was various a, weeks. <laughs> that was a job yeah, dropping so scene. In one, bit, <laughs> in one bit, I'm wigged up. Then I'm then I'm as I am. Then then I've got another wig on. And we just all we all just changed wigs and just kept running around the place and just doing the fight on Kingsman. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, that was a good fight. That, <laughs> that was, was a good that, fight. That was a turn in the movie. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah, that, that movie. Great. But once it got there, yeah. you're like, oh, this, this yeah. is different. This is great. Yeah, that was great. That was a good fun. That was really good fun. It's a good bunch of people on that, wasn't it? I bet. I bet. Yeah. Man, you done some pretty cool stuff. Yeah, it's when been all right. It's been an adventure. It. Yeah, it's been an adventure. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, and there's more to come, I hope. But yeah, it's been it's been good fun. It's been great fun. You know, I, I've got a pretty good feeling that uh, you're going to be doing it for a little while, a little while longer. Well, I hope so. We'll keep you around. I, yeah, I, yeah, I'd like to think so. I'd like to think so. As I say, I finished this. Uh, I finished this in November, uh, Fast and Furious, and then uh, then I go on a few cruises, um, doing nice. the uh, doing doing my show. Uh, my one man show on the cruises, um, and then don't know what next year brings. Really, I, I just have to see really and see what comes in. Yeah, yeah, I like yeah. it. I like it a lot. No, oh, that's it. So, you know, as I say, it's uh, you know, my parents still kind of look at it and go, "Did we see you in a film last night?" I go, "Yeah." Go, oh, yeah, we <laughs> thought it was you because uh, I usually die. So yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I usually get killed, shot, stabbed, run over. Um, but. Um, yeah, it's always it's always nice when people go. I'm sure is that you that you go. Yeah, it's me. They go. Oh, it's, no, it's nice. It's 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 good. It's good fun. It's great. Yeah, fun. I said I had that moment in Britain's Got Talent. I was like, this is not the first <laughs> time I've seen this man. And now I'm like, all right, I get it. I get it. But can you believe we've been talking for an hour already? Oh my god. Oh, that's, that's that's me gossiping. Sorry, mate. Hey, that's what I like to hear. I said, that, that's that's my litmus test at the end of the episodes. So I'm like, it's been an hour, and I'm waiting for someone to be like, yeah, I know. And I'm like, Ugh, all right, oops, hold on. <laughs> Let's roll this back. <laughs> but, dude, this was really fun. I, I've had a great time. I, I hope you've enjoyed it as well. No, thank you very much. It's nice to have the opportunity to do it, and it's always nice to people, you know, talk to people that are enthusiastic about what we do and, and appreciate what we do as well. That's the nice thing, and it's – um you know, because it's it's kind of been, you know, as I mentioned, our brilliant got talent. We don't, you know, we don't get the Oscars, we don't get the Baftas or anything like that, and we kind of put in the not put in the dark, but we we still kind of left in the dark, really. With it's what true. We do. And, it is true. And a lot of people still they're recognising what we do and what we put into into film. So it's always nice that people come up and appreciate it. You know, even if I'm in the high street and somebody comes up and says, "Oh, I saw you on so and so. That was a great sequence. I saw your stunt work." You know, or I followed you on Instagram or facebook or twitter or what have you and they go it's great it's, it's brilliant keep up the good work so yeah it's always nice always nice to be appreciated so uh, no i appreciate the call it's great yeah of course of course i mean that's my whole show it's like finding people that like i'm gonna give you a microphone and be like everyone look at this person that you love you just don't know their name yet <laughs> it's a service i provide here 
Man, I do my best. Well, you provide the good service. We like it. Oh, stop it, you. So I, before I forget, I do have to ask, where can people find you online? Um, so if they go to uh, – on my Insta, uh, my Instagram is BGT Magic Matt. Love it. Um, and uh, my uh, Facebook – I've got a – I've got a Facebook page as well, which is Matthew Sterling Magician. Um, and they'll see the picture on there. There's no special picture on there. There is a picture of me doing, you know, magic or standing around. My media team covers that. And I've got an in- uh, Instagram is BGT Magic Matt. And also um, I've got, um, I want to keep my my um, website up to date, which is sterlingstunts.co.uk. And it's sterling with an I. So S-T-I-R-L-I-N-G, sterlingstunts.co.uk. I love it. Love it. Everyone's going to check it out, and they're going to love you too. It's going to be the best. No problem. Cheers, Brian. Thanks very much. Great talking to you. You take care, mate. You too, brother. All right. And... Cheers, mate. friends thank you so much for listening to this episode of the interesting podcast if you'd like to follow the show it is at pod of interest on twitter if you'd like to follow me i'm at jedi brian on all social media sites if you enjoyed this episode please share it and tell your friends let them know we've got some cool stuff going on over here speaking of cool stuff we now have merch just search the interesting podcast on tpublic.com to get some sweet gear also i've made a patreon so if you'd like to support the show and get access to other exclusive shows you can now do that at patreon.com slash Jedi Brian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Logan, Victor, and JC. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well. <laughs>